Hi folks, we're back with Dr. Bruce Laurie. So Bruce, what's the importance of having goals? Well, think about it. You go to school, they want to teach you English. They want to teach, there's goals there, you know, they want to teach you maths, they want to teach you social skills and they're constructing a world from you for you because we're young, age five, six, that you hopefully internalize. And it helps you negotiate different challenges and, and pathways in your life. We get to a stage where it's not the external world that's creating our understanding. We're taking charge ourselves. We've got to look at how we create our own world, where we're we going to go, what decisions that I'm going to make. For example, am I going to go to university? Am I going to go to work? And if, if you have an intention to do something and you make it into a goal, it's far more achievable. It's not a hope, it's a wish. You construct something externally, you take it in within your own mind, and it creates clarity. You, one of the important things, John, is that it gives meaning. A life without a meaning is a pretty challenging one. You know, what are you going to do with your day to day? I've got lots of things I'm going to do, and that's all parts of goals. That's reasons, that's life meaning. So when we think about goals, it's giving direction, it's giving meaning, it's creating understanding. A life without a goal can be a pretty lonesome one. So why, why is making progress towards their goals so key to people's mental health and well-being? I would say that I would formulate it in this way. Being the best you matters. Uh, this is a conversation I had not long ago, and I'll use you as an example. John, there's only one John. Right. You are the only John in the world. There's only one of you. You're no better than anybody else, but you're no worse than anybody. You're everybody's equal. So, John, you're unique. You're the equal to everybody. That's a very, very good start to establishing who you are. Now, in order to be the best you, John, it's important that you understand what you're good at and what you're not so good at and what you want to concentrate on. Do you want to be improve the things you're not so good at or do you just want to go and concentrate the things that you, you are good at? But whatever you want to do or decisions that you, when you get to a specific age, are responsible for. But it's not about anybody else. It's about you setting goals in your life that are meaningful, meaningful for you, not for anybody else. They give your life meaning, they give your life direction. When you're feeling a bit rough, and that's part of the human condition, we have the days that are not so, so good. When we have structure, when we have meaning, when we have goals, life can be that much easier to get through the rough times. We can make the most of the good times. And when we have goals and meaning and structure and direction, it helps us go through the times that are not so good. A life without a goal, and it doesn't have to be, the, be to be an Olympic champion, but you know, I, I would like to learn to paint or I'd like to learn to do this. So I've got a reason to go out shopping, to buy something, then come back and then start creating it. So, so when you build a shared understanding that helps you improve your ability to focus, harness your emotion, to have it work for you instead of against you, and help you progress at a significantly faster rate, you get amazing results. And Bruce, you've written an incredible document to share with everyone. And can you tell us just a little bit about what it's about and why you wrote it? Well, I had so many people come to me in different spheres of their life that were experiencing huge challenges with their mental and physical well being. Apart from the fact that they were using the mind in a way that was counterproductive, there was voids in the life, there was emptiness, 
one of the classics is you can be a phenomenal athlete and be highly successful. And I'm not speaking of thinking about anybody in particular. Attain what you believe that was important to attain and you work very hard for, then all of a sudden that ends and there's a vacuum. And it's often filled with, say, let's call it depression, anxiety, et cetera, et cetera. But there was a lack, John, of a shared understanding of that process. There was an emphasis on helping people when the problems arise, rather than putting people in a situation where they can help themselves so they can avoid these problems. But it starts, John, with a shared understanding. So I went and I wrote this and this is, and I went freely distributed. And <laughs> I've got a funny story about it in a minute, but um, to one, create a shared understanding of what constitutes well-being how it influences us, influences us in several ways, how we can learn skills on a daily basis that will increase our ability to manage our thoughts and enhance our well-being. So when it comes to moments that are challenging, when our coach and our comrades are not there, we, are, we know we've been trained to understand it. So the dripping tap, being taught that on a regular basis. Now, that's why I, 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 I wrote it to enhance people's well-being, to invite, the, to invite them to, to understand, to create their knowledge and develop their abilities to man. And this is for coaches as well, because one of the important things I put in there, it's not just the athlete that's challenged, it's also coaches. And so- you Look at coaches, that also could mean in athletes, right? You're looking at the same thing with, with Every every uh, situation where you have a somebody who's trying to manage, or, or right or or help, and then and then the, the the participant that's working with them, right. So it could be a manager, an employee. It could be a right uh, somebody who's over a soldiers, etc. It's the pressure what, is on both sides. Yes, what I what I said in the first few po noted in the first few paragraphs was, I am using sport as an example but basically I'm speaking about life. Whatever's in there is to do with being human. So here's, here's the story. Two, I'm in Tenerife at the moment and I was at Tenerife top training, great sports center. And I'm standing there speaking to, and I'm not going to use his name. He probably, you probably see this, but I was speaking to this coach who was in charge of a national team. And I've spoken to him for years. But he didn't know my name. You know, we, we never said, you know, what's your name and all, but we, we just chatted away. And I used to chat to his athletes. And last time he was here, and it was a couple of weeks ago, he goes, says, look, we've chatted for years. What's your name? And uh, he knew I was a psychologist. So I says, Bruce. He says, oh, yeah. I said, Bruce Laurie. He says, you're that guy. I've got your document. I've given it all my coaches. Um. <laughs> <laughs> It's great. I, I I read. I have to say, Bruce, I read that, and I started digging. I'm not a, a reader for pleasure. I I read for you know for work and things. But I have to say, I could not put it down. Thirty two pages later, I think I stayed up till like three or four o'clock in the morning. One no, that, that's not a that I was started to read it. I was working out, doing my uh, you know rehab and things like this, and I started reading this, and I I think I worked out for three hours just because of. Because <laughs> I just kept riding the bike that I was on, like, wow, this is fantastic. And I want to keep going over it and understanding parts of it. It's amazing to yeah. me the things that you that needed to be said that I, I couldn't put in words myself, and you put them in. It's just wonderful. Great I try, article. I to, thank you, John. I tried to create a shared understanding. Sure did. And I, I presented solutions. Because at the moment, people are looking at this huge problem. I'm saying, Vic, go in and understand this. And this is what you do. This is how you do it. This is how you approach it. It's very easy to stick things up online and say, and if you've got this problem, read this. No, go in and understand. Then go in and create a shared understanding. And then go and here are the techniques enabling. And we're going to put for the folks that are watching, we're going to put a link to that 
to that the uh, landing page where you can read that document and get into it. And it's really phenomenal. There's all kinds of shows in there that Bruce and I have made that really kind of highlight uh, you know, different piece of the article. If you prefer to just listen a little bit, you can listen to the interviews, or if you want to dig in and read it, and there's so much in there. It, it's, it's so valuable. So Bruce, I'm going to just uh, share one more time here, uh, one last uh, uh, animation, and uh, I want to go through a little bit of information while I'm doing so. So um, here we go. So we found that after using this to train our super athletes and recognizing how much more success they were having, we tested it on other performers in different fields, such as students, soldiers, doctors, and we found the same amazing results. Training your mind changes everything. Mm -hmm. And it really makes a huge difference. Bruce, thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to more of your amazing insight coming up. Folks, you can access our MindWorks programs on our website and work with our MindWorks experts and amazing people like Dr. Bruce Laurie in either individual or group sessions. Contact us, get started training your mind for incredible performance today. Thank you so much, Bruce. Pleasure.